The Trump administration is set to ban bump stocks after the pressure resulting from the mass shooting in Las Vegas, after which police discovered that the shooter had 13 rifles that were outfitted with bump stocks. Luckily, we can all rest assured knowing that the NRA will fight these regulations in order to support our Second Amendment right- <laughs> Wait a second. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, fellow crazy right-wing lunatics that fantasize about a modern-day Red Dawn scenario. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Today, we're going to talk about bump stocks and how they pertain to the NRA's stance on gun policy and the Trump administration. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with bump stocks, essentially what it is is an attachment that can increase the rate of fire for a semi-automatic rifle. Here's a demonstration of the differences between a traditional stock and a bump stock on an AR-15 rifle. Okay. Now it looks pretty cool to be honest, but basically what it does is it allows the natural recoil of the gun to work with itself to pull the trigger again faster than a human finger could. It's pretty cool, but you don't really need to buy a $300 bump stock to do this. A bump stock does not modify the functionality of the rifle. It's simply a mechanism that you could learn to do with your hand and a belt loop. That technique is called bump firing, by the way, and uh, there's a lot of other ways that you can convert semi-automatic weapons into fully automatic weapons, which really just means that you can make it shoot faster by your own effort, not the gun doing it because it was engineered to do so. Uh, here's another example. There's a rapper that goes by the name of 21 Savage, and he frequently references in his songs how he goes about firing his guns rapidly with external attachments, and the song Still Serving, he raps, quote, Got a bitch hooked on dick. Put a shoestring in my tech. So poetic. It's but uh, what he's talking about is he attached a shoestring to his Tech Nine in order to increase its rate of fire. He mentioned this again in his song "Pull Up and Wreck," where he raps, "Fuck a diss song, get you stressed, little word." Got a shoestring on my tech, little n word. So he's referencing that, which the ATF is labeled shoestring machine guns because they can be used in the same way to increase the rate of fire for semi-automatic firearm uh, firearms. The shoestring alone is fine, but the moment that it's added to the firearm, the firearm becomes a machine gun and it's therefore illegal. Okay, so the point here is that if someone wants to make their weapon shoot faster, they're going to do it regardless of regulation. We're not going to ban shoestrings, are we? No, of course not. American culture is too heavily grounded in our constitutional right to walk around without the worry of our shoestrings falling off. And of course, they'll say, well, we're not trying to take your guns, we're just trying to take the attachment for your guns. Really? You guys were just trying to ban AR-15s. With bump stocks, I, I don't even own one because... After the ban was announced, I decided to be a law-abiding citizen, and just in case anyone from ATF is wondering, but I can understand why other people would want to own one. In my opinion, they're just a pretty cool range toy. I personally don't have a practical purpose for one, but I'm sure that other people do. The thing is, though, is that the bump stock ban is not about the bump stocks. It never was. No one actually cares about bump stocks. What the bump stock ban is about is chipping away. It's about covering ground. It's about establishing a precedent. Every mass shooting always triggers the proposed ban of AR-15s, but they went for the bump stocks on this one so they could at least cover some ground. Everyone knows that semi-automatic fire is far more accurate than automatic fire, which is why the military encourages our soldiers to use semi-automatic fire in almost every scenario. This has also led many experts to conclude that the gunman could have killed and injured more people if he had fired one shot at a time at specific targets. Of course, that's not what we want, but the point is that the bump stocks are effectively not going to make you deadlier. Even the Obama era ATF classified bump stocks as merely a firearm accessory and therefore not subject to federal regulations. What this really is about is creating a smokescreen. The Democrats have made the bump stocks the new boogeyman, that if we had only banned the bump stocks earlier, Vegas wouldn't have happened, even though we banned killing people like, I don't know, in the year seven or something, but it still happens. So. Now the bump stocks are going to be banned and the Democrats can convince themselves and their base that they have made significant progress in implementing common sense gun control. Here's the problem. They aren't going to stop there. They never have, historically. There is no such thing as a one-time compromise. If you give them an inch, they will try to take your AR-15s. And believe me, that's what's going to be the next target. It'll be reintroduced because the next time some bastard decides to go shoot something up, they'll say, oh, well, it's actually because we didn't ban the AR-15s. The bump stocks were just a start, but really, if we want to stop this, we're going to have to ban the AR-15s. And Republicans will say, ha, uh, Miss Pelosi, I thought you said that, you know, if we let you take the bump stocks, that we just kind of chill out on the whole gun control thing because I have an election coming up. But then the question becomes, why are Republicans advocating for this ban too? 
Why the party of the Second Amendment? Why are we going to allow this to happen? To bring the Democrats to the table for related or even other policy matters. That's why. Trump needs to get all the help he can get with passing his agenda. So if he's convinced that banning the bump stocks will just undo everything that they've said about him, how they've sworn to do everything and anything within the scope of their power to stop his agenda, he is surely mistaken. And where's the NRA during all of this? They're in support of it too. They released a statement saying, quote, despite the fact that the Obama administration approved the sale of bump fire stocks on at least two occasions, the National Rifle Association is calling on the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Expo to buy firearms and Explosives um, to immediately review whether these devices comply with federal law, which is basically saying, hey, these are legal, but we want you to run the analysis again until you decide that they are not legal. The last sentence of the statement is the most telling. They write, quote, to that end, on behalf of our 5 million members across the country, we urge Congress to pass national right to carry reciprocity, which will allow law-abiding citizens to defend themselves and their families from acts of violence. That's the legislation that would make CPLs from one state accepted in every state, which is something that Trump campaigned on, and I think that's an excellent idea. But is it worth losing on bump stocks? They literally plugged this legislation in their statement. They've revealed their hand, and that's okay. You know, we're going to let you have the bump stocks, but you got to let us carry in all 50 states. The thing about that, though, is that it's already largely in effect. In my state, for example, a concealed pistol license is honored in 39 other states. Uh, through this legislation, the only states that I would then be able to carry in would be states like California and New York. But why would I want to go to those states anyway? Is that reciprocity really worth it? Is it worth it to open the door for more gun control in order to get this victory? Which isn't even guaranteed. It's basically just we're crossing our fingers that maybe they let us have it. But they won't. When has appeasement ever worked? Historically speaking, if you keep appeasing powers that want to take your rights away, you'll eventually have your rights taken away. Or even Poland. This is why I think it's time to explore alternatives to the NRA. And I know they have cool hats, cool decals, and I get it. I respect the history of the NRA and everything that they've done. But if you're an NRA member, I would consider donating money to other organizations instead of just the NRA. My personal recommendation would be the Gun Owners of America. They didn't respond to the bump stock ban with a statement of support. No, they responded with a lawsuit. If you think the NRA is hated by the media, just look at the way that the GOA is regarded. The only no compromise gun group in Washington. They're tougher than the NRA, aren't they? That's right. The NRA is bad, really bad. Gun Owners of America is even worse than bad. The GOA does not compromise. They do not support any form of firearm restriction. They are the toughest gun rights advocacy group in the country, and I strongly suggest that you donate a proportion of your annual charity to them. Of course, there are other very effective groups too, like the Firearms Policy Coalition, Second Amendment Foundation, National Association for Gun Rights, all great groups. If you really support the Second Amendment, it's your duty to stop donating money to the own, like just to only the NRA. Let them know that you don't support their appeasement of the Democrat Party's attempts to regulate our firearms. And if they won't fight for your rights, give to a charity group that will. Let them compete. That's what the free market's all about, right? Because, you know, it's true. The AR-15s are next. Dianne Feinstein just introduced a bill to ban assault weapons, particularly going after AR pistols, I think. The AR-15s are an even bigger boogeyman than the bump stocks. They'll say, oh, no, we don't, we don't want to take your guns. We just want to take the weapon of choice for mass shooters. Then when they realize that they didn't stop mass shootings that way, then they'll come for all the semi-automatics, etc., etc., until we're no longer citizens but instead subjects, like in the UK. And we don't want that, so don't let them keep getting away with this. Don't let them gain any ground, because they will not stop until you are disarmed. Hey guys, if you like this video, click my face down there to subscribe, and give me a thumbs up and a comment, let me know what you think about this, and uh, share this video with a friend of yours that also likes guns and not being disarmed and not living in tyranny. Those are all great. So thank you so much for watching. May God bless America.